Welcome back to the next chapter of the Ice Maker Chronicles. Uh, we are here following the story of young Darren, um, the Ice Maker, who is a robot uh, made by the Dynatron Corporation. Um, even though that says foundation, I still haven't fixed it. And um, he is, uh, there's a lot of like kind of Scooby-Doo antics. Uh, that's what I, I'm seeing this as. But uh, maybe we'll have some, some things we'll pick up. Something is going on at the dumps. Something is happening down at the dumps. And he is going to go investigate what is happening down at the dumps. Now, of course, he has to spend his day in school. Uh, he gets through his day at school. And uh, he hops a series of buses to get out to uh, what's called Hunter's Point in San Francisco, where the big dump is. Uh, gets out there, uh, probably taking the bus if he leaves at uh, 3 o'clock, um, you know, after school and then takes a series of buses. He probably doesn't get out there until 4.30, uh, 5 o'clock. And... Um, you know, he gets up to the, the front and they're just, they, they're probably closing at around five o'clock, I would say. The dumps don't stay open late. Um, it's not like all night dumping or whatever. So uh, he is going to go out there and he is going to try and just kind of scope the place out and see what happens. That is our expected scene. And so um, we are going to see if uh, the scene happens the way we think it's going to happen. That he goes out, he maybe talks to somebody uh, at the dump, um, you know, under the guise of being a reporter for a school newspaper, um, uh, you know, he goes out there to do that. So he heads out there. Is, will Darren be able to interview somebody at the dump about uh, the current cr garbage crisis that is going on in the city of San Francisco? Uh, so that is the expected scene. He's going to go out there. He's going to to talk to whoever, you know, like the guy at the window when you drive in or whatever, uh, just to see uh, what he can find out. Um, so that is the expected scene. Our chaos factor rating is a six and one to seven, it is expected. So uh, he goes out and we will say, so we can bump this up a little bit, uh, that he talks to, um, he talks to maybe the, um, we'll say the, not the owner, because he wouldn't get an interview with the owner, but like the, the lead foreman uh, at the dump. And he will be number two. Uh, put that right there. He will be number two. So the lead foreman at the dump, he goes to talk to the lead foreman at the dump. And he's interviewing him about this thing. And... Uh, Here's the question. Is the lead foreman at the dump being open with Darren or does he just think that this kid is a nuisance? So uh, chaos, I'm going to say that it is unlikely uh, that he is being uh, honest with this. I, I would think that he just thinks that this, you know, th this kid is a nuisance um, is basically I think he would try to be nice to him, but he, he does think he's a nuisance. So I think it's unlikely uh, he would, you know, willingly sit for an interview and talk to this kid. Uh, so um, we need all yeses. We're going to draw two cards. And then because our chaos factor rating is a six, we get one extra card. So we need three yeses. There's the first yes. We get a no. So this guy is not, not uh, happy with him. And in fact, we'll say he loses his patience and he tells... Uh, he, he tells uh, Darren to go take a hike. Now, Darren uh, says, like, all right, you know, I understand. Um, you know, do you mind if I take a walk around the dump? And the guy's like, yeah, you can take a walk around the dump from the outside, outside the fence. Uh, he doesn't want him uh, walking around. So Darren uh, leaves the dump, but he does figure he is going to take this walk around uh, the fence. So uh, he walks around the outside um, and does Darren see anything suspicious? Now, again, I'm going to say it is likely, so that is any yes. The chaos factor is six, and so we draw one card, uh, one extra card, so that it's a total of three cards. So any yes here will be that he sees something suspicious, and right off the top, we get a yes. So now we need to find out what does he see. We're asking for a description, and he sees something that is cool. Kookily lethal. Kookily lethal. So he sees, um, 
I mean, you know, if this was if we were playing in the DC universe, this would be easy. This is uh, this is you know uh, the Joker, right? Someone who's kookily lethal. Um, but uh, let's see. I don't. I'm not familiar with sort of kooky villains in the um, Spider-Man or in the in the in the Marvel universe. All right, we're back now. I'm sure if you're watching this, you are aware of the awesome. Uh, Marvel Superheroes Unofficial Canon Project. They do all these great uh, sort of files, uh, and, and it's almost as if a TSR was still making um, files and stuff. So one of the files that I love that they have made is the Spidey Stories files uh, that just have sort of like goof, these goofy stories. And when uh, the, you know, the, the card said, um, kookily lethal, I thought right away of this character, April Fool. Uh, because he's just kind of a foolish character, and, um, you know, this is sort of a kid's story. If you're looking for hard-hitting comic book action, uh, this story right here that we're currently in maybe isn't for you with the Ice Maker. Also, it's his first adventure, so uh, probably having him not go against the Rhino was a good idea. So, uh, we are going to put April Fool here uh, on the thing, and April Fool... Oh, we already have... Sorry... We already have April Fool up here. So we're going to say that while he is um, sneaking around, the, while Darren is sneaking around the dump, he sees April Fool talking to two thugs. Uh, and they are, he, he kind of overhears them. And... Uh, Let's see, we'll get our, here's Darren right here. He will be the blue. And then uh, we have April Fool and the two thugs. Now there is a fence. Um, you can see that on the map, great. Uh, we'll say that, uh, you know, there is a fence that uh, he sees them through. So this will be the fence. You're watching this happen here. This is like a, these, this is my unique marking for a chain link fence. Um, but we will say that there is uh, a gate right here. It's made of chain link, but there's a gate, but there's a padlock on it. And then uh, we have, of course, big piles of, it's the dump, you know, like uh, there's just some trash there. We'll say there's some, uh, just boxes of all kinds of stuff here. Uh, and we'll say there is like, uh, I don't know, aluminum cans here. Like this is the recycling area. Like this. And we've got uh, April Fool, who is our big villain. And we've got two thugs. And you know who else we'll put out here is we'll put out the, um, the guy that uh, Darren was just talking to, the, the lead foreman uh, of the dump. Uh, let's see, I'll use a different color for him. Because he is, the way I'm playing this is he is kind of a... Uh, uh, you know, civilian, like he's, he's kind of at the whim of, of these. So they're all standing here talking. Now, what we want to know is, um, and I'm going to say the chaos factor has gone up a little bit because now there's a villain. Uh, what we want to know is, is, uh, you know, let's put him in the center there. Is the lead foreman in sort of any trouble right now? Um, you know, I, I picture him going to April Fool and going, listen, we got to we got to cool it. I've got kids around here asking now, you know, the, the city's protesting. The kids are out here and we will say, let's see that um, the trash isn't. Uh, oh, here's the here's the thing with the April Fool's uh, with with the, uh, the April Fool is uh, we'll say this is the problem and this is why people are protesting. Um, when the garbage is picked up from people's houses in San Francisco, uh, things are happening. The, the trash cans are being vandalized. 
And I don't know what the end of this, uh, the end game here is. But uh, so like the garbage comes, they pick up the trash. Somebody goes to put their trash back in and there's like uh, grease all over the handle. There's joy buzzers on the handle. Um, and it's just a public nuisance and the, the, the people are upset. Um, but April Fool, uh, let's say April Fool has some information about the mayor. So the mayor is saying that uh, this can continue happening. So now uh, what I want to know is the lead foreman, is he, uh, is he like saying to April Fool, like, we got to knock this up? And, uh, or is he, um, well, I'm going to say that that's what he's doing. I'm going to say, well, I mean, I guess we could roll for it. The, the thing is at seven. I'm going to say it's very likely. So three cards, any yes. Chaos factor is at a seven. So that's one extra card. Any yes. We get a no. There you go. There's a yes. So he is, he's asking them to knock it off. Uh, of course, April Fool doesn't want to knock it off because this is his way of terrorizing the city. So we're going to say that April Fool is getting um, a little angry. So here we go with some action. Let's get some action going here. Um, where is my, I guess it's in here. Oh, let's see, I have it in here. Um, common costs, speed, popularity, ranks. Let's see, karma, material strength. What would a chain link fence be? A chain link fence would be iron or the lock on the fence would be iron. Yeah, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's good or excellent. Let's say it's good. Let's give him a little bit of a, let's say it's not the best. I mean, it's a padlock on a dump fence. So how tight are they going to keep it? So uh, Ice Maker's powers, and here we go into his powers. Uh, his ice uh, ranged attack is excellent 20. So it's an excellent 20 against a, um, what did I say it was? We're, uh, we're gonna say it's good. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's, you know, I mean, it, it's above, so it's going to hit. So we will say that he uh, hits, hits this, uh, busts the lock and is able to get inside. Now, uh, he's got uh, this ranged attack and the range is excellent. Uh, and where is, so that's going to be five spaces away. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So uh, we're going to say that he sneaks in and uh, these thugs are, are getting a little rough uh, with, um, with April Fool. Uh, or with, with April Fool, with the lead foreman. So um, we are going to say that uh, Darren is going to, sorry, this is the first time I'm doing combat like this uh, in this way, so, um, and, and talking through it out loud. So uh, again, I'm very new to this game. Um, so let's say he's got a ranged attack of excellent ice, and uh, the ice attack... Looking that up, I know that was right back here. Uh, ranged attack powers. Um, so his ice attack can be either a, uh, on the, it can be a thrown blunt object or it can ensnare, and that's an agility feat. Um, if thrown blunt, it inflicts up to power rank damage. If ensnarement, it holds the power rank strength. So uh, he could try to ensnare these guys. Uh, the first thing uh, he is going to do is he's going to roll, Darren is going to roll for his multiple attacks. So uh, extra attacks, uh, it's going to be on typical. So will he get one attack or will he get multiple attacks here? So typical, he needs at least a 51 to get two attacks. He will definitely get one attack. Uh, so again, red is the tens, black is the ones. Oof, zero, two. So he's going to get one attack. So we're going to say that he is going to, Darren is actually going to think that the, um, 
April Fool is kind of like not a threat. I mean, like looking at him, uh, you know, he's, he's not a good fighter. He only has typical six fighting. Um, you know, so, so obviously he's, he's, a, he's a better fighter than uh, him. Um, so we will say that he is going to try to ice and snare want this thug right here. He is going to try and ice and snare this thug. So this needs to be an agility, which ice maker, ooh, this is not good. He's gonna have to go, <laughs> he's not a good fighter at all. Um, all right, he's gonna have to try and shoot um, a blunt uh, just some blunt uh, ice particles at this thug right here. So I have this thug here. We've got uh, April Fool and we've got the two thugs. Um, so All right, so this is going to be a blunt fighting attack. Um, his power is excellent, so we'll see if he hits it. Oh, he gets a zero four. So he just completely biffs it uh, and it's a miss. And now these guys turn around and go, what? They're saying, what? That's what they're saying. Uh, so let me look at everybody's, um, their endurance, typical six. His endurance is remarkable 30. So typical is three spaces. Remarkable 30 is six spaces. Uh, so we are going to roll for initiative now. I'm going to give him that first hit. We will roll for initiative. Red will be uh, Ice Maker and um, Black will be the villain team. And it looks like Ice Maker is going to get to go first. And uh, so these guys will, um, let's see, their endurance is typical. And what is, uh, his endurance is good. Um, so still, that's not a lot of ground they can cover. That's what, three and four, typical and good. Yeah, three and four. So um, we'll say they're gonna try and close the area so they can get close enough. They don't have any guns, any weapons. Um, to try and uh, to shoot Ice Maker with. So um, Ice Maker's going to get the first thing. First thing he's going to do is try and roll for uh, multiple, multiple uh, attacks. He probably will not get it, but let's see. Extra attacks, uh, typical six. He needs a big high roll here. 35, I don't think that is good enough. So he is just going to get one attack. Um, I'm going to say that he's going to move two spaces and again try to hit uh, this thug with his uh, blunt uh, ice pockets. I don't know what we're going to Snowballs, ice balls, uh, ice cubes, I guess, because he's ice maker. Um, so let's roll. We're rolling on excellent and we've got a 41. Excellent. 41. That is a green and that is a hit. So, uh, there's, uh, this thug, uh, this thug has no armor. So, uh, and that is actually going to be a 20. So that brings his hit points down to eight. Um, now let me roll to see the order. Uh, April Fool rolls a zero, so that's a 10. He will go first. Uh, this thug rolls, that's the one we just rolled. He rolled a seven, and this thug rolled a six. So this will be the order we put them in. April Fool is going to go first. Um, and April Fool is going to run and he is going to try and take a swing at 
is fighting as a typical six. So is he going to be able to land a, uh, this is just going to be a punch. There's going to be a lot of punching in this fight. He gets a zero two. So that's going to be a miss. Uh, the other, let's see our neck. So he misses our next thug is going to close the space, but he can't quite get in there because there's all this trash. And our next thug is going to close the space as well. So there's sort of a bottleneck here. Um, and so we will go to the next round. Uh, Ice Maker will be red. The villains will be black. We get a one, we get a two. So the villains are going to go first. Uh, and Ice Maker again is going, or April Fool again is going to try and clobber uh, Ice Maker with a fist. Oh, I got to roll two dice. What am I doing? I got to roll two dice. Red is the tens. Black is, ooh, again, 05. He biffs it again. And these other two thugs, they can't, they can't get at him. We're going to say this thug is going to stay here trying to get at him. The third thug is going to start trying to work his way around to get behind him. So one, two, three. There's his three movement. Uh, but he's still got a while ago to get around behind him. And we are on our next round. Um, oh, wait. So the villains went first. This is now Ice Maker's turn. Ice Maker is going to roll for multiple attacks. It's typical. Ooh, it's a 90. Typical 90. It is a yellow, so he will actually get one, two, three attacks here. And uh, so for his first attack, he is going to roll the excellent power against uh, April Fool. He's going to try... He's actually going to try and ensnare him, uh, which is a roll on the excellent. Oof, zero six. He's not able to do it, so that's his first attack. He's going to try it again. Uh, there is a 53, so excellent. Uh, 53, so that is... Um, That is a uh, 53. So that is a hit. So now Ice Maker has to roll his agility to make an agility check um, to try and not be ensnared. Uh, so his agility is good. And let's see, what do we... I guess that's a shooting attack, right? Throwing edge, throwing blunt, energy, force. Sorry, I got to look this up again. Oh, he has to roll an agility feat to hit. Okay. So backing up, Ice Maker has to roll an agility feat, and his agility is poor. He's not going to make this. Remember, this is his second move. He will get one left. Maybe he'll make it. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, 77. So poor. 77. That is a hit. That is So he ensnares him. And he is now ensnared with... Um, with the ranks... Uh, the rank strength, so excellent strength. He is now in stared with excellent strength. Um, and his strength, so April, uh, April Fool is rooted in place. He can't go anywhere. We're going to say, uh, let's see, that was his second attack. Um, one, two, he is going to try and hit this thug again for his third and final attack with a blunt ice cube. Uh, kind of shooting over the shoulder of April Fool. And so this is excellent. 54. Excellent. 54. That is a hit. And sorry, I have to keep referring to this because my mind is like a sieve. Uh, so this is thrown blunt. Uh, thrown blunt here. So it was a green. So this is a hit. So he hits him. Uh, the strength is an excellent. And this is the thug who was hit previously. And that is going to wipe him out and bring him down to zero. 
So this thug will say he, 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 I mean, he doesn't get slammed, but he is out. And April Fool is ensnared. And that is the end of that round. So uh, let me let me take this thug out of the out of the running. April Fool is ensnared. He can't move. Um, and we will say that uh, this uh, we will roll for initiative. So Ice Maker will be red. Ooh, they both roll an eight. So we'll roll again. Seven and zero. So um, oh, but that's a ten though. So the villains get to go first here. So. Uh, April Fool is going to, um, since Ice Maker didn't move, he is going to try and take a swing at him uh, right there. His fighting is a typical six. He can't move, but uh, oof, he rolls a 57. Typical six. That is going to hit. So on the blunt attacks, that is a hit. It is a green hit. And that will be uh, strength is typical six. So that will bring um, his health down to 68. So he will want to move after that. And uh, so then the next turn is the basic, the other thug. He's got one, two, three. So he's still not around there yet. And that will end their turn. Uh, Ice Maker is going to try and roll multiple attacks. He is on the typical chart to do that. He gets a 48. I don't think that is going to be good enough. That is going to be uh, one. No, that is going to be, so that'll be one attack. Um, I'm going to say he's going to move back one, two, because he doesn't want him to hit him again. Um, and he is going to try and shoot uh, a thing at the ensnared um, April Fool and try and knock him out. Uh, it goes without saying he's like he didn't kill this thug. Uh, he's trying to pull his punches. So this will be an excellent. He's trying to do the blunt attack thing. Uh, 39 on the excellent. 39. Oof, he misses. He doesn't get it. Um, so there you go. That is the end of that round. So let's roll initiative again. We've got uh, Ice Maker Red. He rolls a four. He rolls a two. So he will get uh, the first shot. Uh, he is going to roll for his extra things. He's going to roll on the typical chart here. Gets a 48. Don't think that's going to be good enough. No. So he gets one attack. And again, he's just going to try and smack, uh, knock out April Fool. Um, and this will be excellent on the excellent chart. 54, excellent, 54. That's going to be a green. Uh, and so we roll April Fool's Fighting, which is a typical six. And, ooh, he rolls a 75. Uh, 75 typical is a green. Blunt attacks. That is a hit. So that may be it for April Fool. He may be, let's see, what are his hit points? His health is 32. No, so that drops him down to 12. Uh, and now it's it's the bad guy's turn. It's April Fool's turn, but he, he is out of range. He can't do anything. Um, and then actually, let's say that he has, because in this, um, in kind of this fun thing, he's got an oil slick. Let's see, he reaches into his pocket and pulls out this oil gun. Um, we will say it's a ranged attack. We'll say it's good. Um, and he is a good. So let's see what we get here. Uh, 26, that might not be good enough. It is not good enough. So he completely misses there. And then now, one, two, three, the thug comes around and he is gonna try to punch uh, Ice Maker from behind. And this is actually, uh, well, Ice Maker, it's not his turn, so he wouldn't be able to dodge or whatever. This is still the same turn. So um, he's gonna try and smack him from behind. His fighting is a good, the basic thug. 
And, ooh, 25. I don't think that's going to be good enough. Nope. All right. So we will now roll for initiative. And Ice Maker is red. Ooh, two and a one. So Ice Maker gets it, but just barely. So Ice Maker now knows that this thug's here because the thug took a swing at him. So Ice Maker is going to try and um, blast him with the ice chunks. Um, ice range attack, excellent 20. All right, so. Uh, and these are blunt. Yeah, so it does blunt damage. So. He needs, uh, so he's rolling excellent 20. 31, oof. That is going to be a miss. So he just completely misses with the ice chunk. He's surprised because uh, he came up behind him. Um, and let's see. Uh, for his turn, April Fool is actually going to try to um, escape. So he's going to try and use his strength to escape from the ice. And uh, April Fool's strength is a typical six, so he'll need to roll high here in order to make that happen. Um, Oof. Woof. Rolls a nine. That's not going to work. That's going to be, uh, yeah, he's not going to be able to escape. Typical. Yep. All right. So it is the thug's turn again, and the thug is going to take a swing at Ice Maker. His fighting is good. Uh, oof. 54. That might hit. 54... Uh, yeah, that does hit. That is a green. So, um, let's see if there's any sort of slam or stun that happens here. Uh, oh, this is just a hit. It's just a hit. So, his strength is a typical six. So, now down to 62 is Ice Maker, and Ice Maker, let me see, it has been a day or so since I looked at this. Um, uh, uh, extra attacks, oh, I forgot to roll for his extra attacks. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, so I'm gonna roll for his extra attack. Wait, he went, he went, he went, and he started. Oh, so we gotta roll initiative again. But I'll remember this time to roll for his extra attack. Uh, oh, so the bad guys are going first here. So, uh, April Fool again is going to try and escape. Uh, his strength is typical six, so he's gotta roll super high here. 31. Typical, nope, not good enough. He is still stuck in the ice. The ice is slowly melting. All right, so the thug now is going to try and punch him again. And his fighting is good. Ooh, that's a big roll there. That is a 67. Uh, and let's see, good. So still only a green, um, but that does hit. So that will be another six points off which will bring ice maker down to 56 he's still doing okay now he's gonna roll for multiple moves he's got uh, it's a typical right he needs a high roll on extra attacks typical okay oof that's not gonna work uh it's, yeah don't even have to look so he gets one attack all right so again, he really needs to take this, he really needs to take this thug out. Uh, so he's going to try, 
Uh, just blasting him with some ice, his iced ranged attack. Excellent 20, needs a big roll here. Ooh, 78. So 78, excellent. Uh, that is going to push it into the yellow. And it is a ranged attack, right? All right, so that is a yellow, and we're going to roll on the uh, throne blunt chart. So that is just a hit, and it is an excellent 20. So this thug is now down to 20, or no, he's down to eight. I know my math. He is down to eight. April Fool going to try and use his strength Typical six to escape. Uh, no, only a five, so uh, it's a miss. He does not. All right. And let's see. We're rolling for initiative again. One and a six, so the bad guys get it. Uh, April Fool is going to try his escape again. His strength is a typical six, and he rolls a 26, not gonna do it. Man, he is trapped in this ice. Um, so now it's the thug's turn. He is going to try. Um, we're gonna say that there is like a an old microwave uh, right here, and he's gonna grab it and he's gonna try to smash Ice Maker with it. So, uh, this is a blunt attack. Um, and so that'll just affect the damage. But let's see. Although, what is his, his strength is a typical. So, I mean, he can pick it up. Um, where is other transportation, other costs, um, material strength? We're gonna say, we're gonna say this is good. So this could, uh, this could bump his damage up to 10 if he can hit this. Um, but the fighting is good. Ooh, 87. I think he does hit it. Oh no, this could be this could be bad news. Uh, so fighting good. 87 is going to push it into the yellow. And that is a slam. So that's going to be 10 damage. Bring his hit points down to 46. And he is also slammed. So we're gonna say he hit him this way, so he's gonna go slam him back this way. But uh, I think he's, I mean, the, what he's really gonna run into is April Fool. So he smashes into him. All right, so we gotta roll on the slam here. We gotta roll Ice Maker's Endurance, which he's got remarkable 30. Ooh, he rolls really well, 93. Um, so that will be, ooh, almost one more, and it uh, two more points, and it would have been in the red. But um, so Slam, uh, he is staggered, and now I gotta look up quickly what staggering means. Because I'm still learning all this stuff. Uh, slam. The target suffers no ill effect from the slam, but he still takes normal damage. A slam character can be knocked down or across the way. The target of the slam makes an endurance feat. Karma may be added to this feat unless prohibited by other rules. Okay, so he, he is not moved. He just takes the damage. And uh, I think we already got that damage on there. So that's, that's where that is. And now it is his turn. We're going to roll for his extra... Attacks, ooh, 87, this might, uh, let's see, it's a typical, right? 
I know I keep looking at this, but yeah, extra tax, typical. Uh, 87. Oof, he got into the yellow. So is that three attacks? Yellow is three attacks. So he gets three attacks. He might be able to, to put this away. Well, first thing he's going to do is try and uh, just blast the... Um, use his ice power to just blast this thug right in the face for his first attack. Uh, so his uh, ice is excellent. 40. Uh, oh, I always forget that I can add karma. Well, I missed it there. Um, so that's a miss, just a miss by one point. He's gonna try it again. He gets two more attacks. He's gonna try it again, and I will use karma this time. So if I need to get it up. Ooh, 41, <laughs> there it is. I didn't need to use karma. Uh, oh, wait, no, yeah, no, I didn't need to use karma, but uh, I'm glad I did. So I'll take, he'll take one, he'll take, uh, 10 karma off of here. So he's now down to 44. And <clears throat> that is an excellent 20 hit. So, and he would pull his punches too. So that is going to knock this thug out. And finally, for his final attack, he is going to try and blast April Fool who his health is at 12, and he's going to try and blast him with the um, with the ice attack. So this will be an excellent 20. Uh, let me see. I'm not. That wasn't a roll. I wasn't rolling there. I'm just putting. He is out of commission. He is out of commission. The lead foreman is still standing there in shock and disbelief. Um. So he's going to roll uh, excellent 20. Uh, 74. I think that is going to be... That is in the yellow. So, uh, this will be a throwing blunt attack. And he'll have to use his agility, but he's, he's also... I would say he'd even get a column shift to agility because he can't move, but his agility is good. 97. Uh-oh. So... Uh, he is stunned, and we're just going to say that he is stunned enough to do that. Uh, so he wins. Um, and uh, Ice Maker yells to the lead foreman to go call the police. So he does go call the police. Um, and he waits there watching over these three as the sirens come. Uh, and yeah, he is, uh, I think that's it. I think Ice Maker is going to slip out because, uh, th what is this guy going to say that, uh, a, a 13 year old kid beat up these guys? Uh, we're going to keep his, uh, secret identity for now, but let's look at some karma points that we can add here. All right, so looking it over, uh, the closest thing here on the karma table is, uh, um, uh, this was a destructive crime, like they were, they were, de they were destructing things, and, uh, so he stopped the destructive crime, and these guys also got arrested. So that's going to be a total of 30 points. Uh, so... 74 is going to be his new karma. Um, and yeah, I, I would say we, we, we can set our chaos factor back one because uh, I would even say we, we could drop it. Well, I'll say we'll drop it down one after this. He's going to get out of there before the police um, come. So I do, before we wrap up this, segment, I do want to ask a question here. Um, where is, um, so let's see, we can, we can cross off a few of these. The villain is April Fool. We can get rid of him. He was number 15. 
number 15, take that out. And um, the lead foreman at the dump, number two. Get rid of him. Oh, I think this is the wrong. Yeah, that's the that's the draw pile. Number two. There we go. Get that out, and I can put these back in here. And we'll shuffle this up. Give it a good shuffle. There's not many cards there to shuffle. Is there anyone else we can? I'm gonna leave the mayor in there just because uh, you never know. And uh, something nefarious at the dump, he fixed that. So this is also a thread closed. So now here's the last thing I wanted to ask uh, this mysterious person uh, the lead foreman is saying it was a kid. Nobody believes him. Um, he's making his way back home, uh, back to his apartment, his fake apartment. And uh, I just want to see, you know, we had this, this thing at the beginning with the rhino. And I wanted to see if he sees, like, just by chance, he sees the rhino as he's heading home after this uh, fight. So... I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's 50-50, so that's draw one card. The chaos factor is six, so that's draw two cards. And any yes, he will see the rhino. So the first one is a no. The second one is a no. There you go. All right. The rhino is just uh, not coming in uh, to this thing. All right, well, that is it. Uh, stay tuned for even more adventures of the Ice Maker. Uh, he is going to go home. He is going to heal uh, and get his uh, full hit points back. And uh, Dipna is going to uh, download all the data and send it back to the Dynatron uh, tech uh, people. And that'll do it for now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned. There will be, absolutely be, more Adventures of the Ice Maker coming up soon. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.